Hey, this is Caio from EssentialDeveloper.com. Today we'll learn how to write automated tests to prevent memory leaks. So let's go. Okay, so before we start, let me run all the tests to make sure everything is okay. Okay, all the tests are passing. So for today's video, I'm going to use the flow test from our quiz app. You can find the link to the source code in the video description. And as you can see, we are using the factory methods we talked about in the previous video. You can also find the link in the description. And this is how we create the flow for all the tests. So let's have a look at the flow implementation and let's try to create a memory leak here. So as you can see, in one of the private methods, we are returning a closure and we weakfy self to avoid memory leaks. And that's great. The problem is that if I remove the code to weakify self and I run all my tests, they still pass. And that can be a problem because I don't want memory leaks in my application. And maybe during a refactoring, we can somehow forget to weakify self. So how can we prevent that with unit tests so we can automate the process and guarantee that Whatever we do with this class during refactorings, we're not going to introduce memory leaks. Well, first of all, let's skip the memory leak here and let's prove that we can reproduce a failing test proving that the memory leak exists. So what we can do here is we can create a weak var. Let's call it weak sut or we can call it anything you want. Let's give it a type. Let's use the same type as the sut, but let's make it optional because it's a weak variable. Now, following our factory method, since this is the point where we create the flow for all of the tests, we can assign it to a let, return it. But before we return, we can get a weak reference to the SUT, like so. So every time we create our SUT for the test cases, we hold a weak reference to it in the class scope, so we can investigate if it went away from memory after each test. And how can we do that? Let's use the teardown method, because remember that the teardown is invoked after each test method. So here we can create an assertion expecting the weak SUT to be nil. Now, let's run the tests. And as you can see, we have a bunch of failing tests, all of them in the flow test scope, which means there are a bunch of scenarios where if we don't wikify itself, it will create a memory leak. So right now we proved with a unit test that if we write the wrong code, it will generate a memory leak. We just need now to make the test pass. And to make it pass, we just revert the code to weakify itself. Let's run all the tests again, and it's green. So if you are using factory methods, as we showed you in the previous video, you can also improve your coverage with the weak SUT technique and automate the process of checking for memory leaks. So even when you're testing a cluster of objects together, you can get a weak reference to all of them and create an expectation in the teardown to make sure the object is not in memory anymore. So I hope this technique helped you build more resilient applications and automate the tedious manual tasks and of course eliminate a huge class of bugs and even security threats that comes from memory leaks that can affect your user experience. So I hope you enjoyed and learned something today. Don't forget to check the links in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thank you.